there, Royal? It's yet another fantastic day in God's presence. As always, I am happy and privileged to be in your space because you know you are royalty. Come along with me. Let us go into the presence of our King as we pray. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for this time with you. We pray the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts and manifest through every word, through every lesson, through every truth. And let all the glory go back to you, our God. We thank you because this is the most rewarding time of our lives right here at your feet. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Enjoy the service. Welcome back. It's time for Nuggets. And our Nuggets for this month is still how to become a smarter you. At age seven, you should have learned how to read and should start reading to learn. 
The nuggets on how to become a smarter you continue this month. It was started last month and we saw that to become a smarter you, number one, you need to pay attention. And number two, you need to take good notes. If you missed them, they are available on the weekly scroll for the month of September. For this month, we begin from number three. And number three is plan to read ahead. First point, don't wait until the day before your test. If you do, you will rush and even panic and will not be able to do your best, which can make you sad and even begin to hate or fear school. Point number two, to avoid all that, ask your mom or dad for a cool small personal calendar that you can keep by your desk or study area. Now number three, write down your test and assignment dates. If you don't know, ask your teacher and tell her why you want to know the dates. Point number four, with the calendar, you can plan what you study after school each day and during weekends. Now let's look at number five. With the calendar, you can also plan when to do extracurricular activities so that they do not disturb your study time. How to become a smarter you will continue next week. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hello, Royal. I hope you are enjoying the service. I guess you are. It's now time for the word. And you and I know that God's word is the truth. So it's time for the truth. Now, if you are asked if you are poor or wealthy, what would you say? If you say you are poor, hmm, it means you don't know who you are. Our topic today says you are wealthy. I am wealthy. Mm -hmm. Now, child of God, did you hear what I called you? If truly you are a child of God, you are wealthy. Not because of who your parents are or what your parents have. You are wealthy because you are the child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are royalty. You know that, right? Now, David said in Psalm 37 verse 25, Once I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the godly. In other words, children of God abandoned or their children begging for bread. Do you know why? He owns the silver and the gold. In fact, he owns the whole universe. Stars, galaxies, everything. <laughs> now, is it possible for a man to be very wealthy and his child is poor? Hmm. Of course not. <laughs> In Matthew chapter 6, verse 26, the Lord Jesus said, Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in pans. For your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you more valuable to him than they are? 
You know, he also talked about the lilies, how the Lord clothes them. For we humans, we children of God, we are more valuable. Now, let me ask, are children of God more valuable than birds? Of course we are. And you may want to ask me, why are so many children of God poor? Even God is not happy about that, I can assure you. Now, God says in his word in Hosea chapter 6 verse 4, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Many children of God are poor because they are ignorant. They lack knowledge of what God has for them. And this is because they do not read the Bible, God's word. The Bible carries among other things, God's will and plan on how his children should live and enjoy life abundantly. In fact, the Bible says he freely gives us all things to enjoy. But some children of God don't know this. From today, whenever you read the Bible, know that God is talking to you and you should pay good attention and believe him and obey him. If you don't make time for God to talk to you by reading the Bible, then how can you hear him direct you? If you don't read the Bible, how can you know and believe all he has for you? And how can you obey him and receive from him? Remember Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, and then you shall observe to do according to all that is written therein. And then the Bible says, Then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So if you don't read the Bible, how would you have good success? How would you enjoy God's wealth? Now, once in Bible days, there was famine. A time of hunger because of lack of food. At that time, Isaac, the son of Abraham, heard from God. <laughs> God told Isaac not to go to Egypt and that he, God, will bless him. Now, sometime before then, Abraham, Isaac's father, had gone to Egypt. So Isaac wanted to do the same thing. He assumed that God would want him to go to Egypt too. But God said, no. So God talks to us individually. So let's continue. So Isaac listened and obeyed God. What do you think happened to Isaac in the land of famine? Let's find out from the Bible. Now our Bible reading is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 26 verses 12 to 14. I'll read in the New Living Translation. Please listen. When Isaac planted his crops that year, he harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted for the Lord blessed him. He became a very rich man and his wealth continued to grow. He acquired so many flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle and servants that the Philistines became jealous of him. Did you hear that? At the time of famine, when there was hunger and suffering all around Isaac prospered until he became very rich and very wealthy his wealth increased so much that the Philistines envied him and that was because 
they did not understand why he was prospering the way he was. They didn't understand why he was prospering while they were experiencing famine and hunger. Now the Philistines did not know why Isaac prospered. What about you? Do you know why Isaac prospered in the time of famine? <laughs> One main reason Isaac prospered was because he was a child of Abraham. And God had already promised to bless every child of Abraham with wealth and riches. Are you a child of Abraham? Do you know that you too are a child of Abraham? Now look into your Bible. Look into Galatians chapter 3 verse 29. It says, And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you and me too. <laughs> now, if you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, the wealth and riches and greatness that belong to Abraham belongs to you too. Read Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3 and find out for yourself the blessings of Abraham that God had given to Abraham every child of God. But then, for you to live the wealthy life God has for you, like Isaac, you have to allow God to instruct you and direct you through his word. And you have to believe God and work hard. Isaac was not laid back. Remember, he sowed in the land and that same year he reaped a hundred fold. He didn't leave the harvest in the farm to rot, remember? He reaped. <laughs> now, what are the truths in today's story? Think about it. Okay, truth number one. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, the blessing and wealth of Abraham now belongs to every child of God. Two, your part as a child of God is to believe God that you are a heir of God and that makes you wealthy. Three, ignorance of God's word is one major reason children of God don't know they are wealthy and that is why they remain poor. So, what have you learned today? What are the lessons to take home? Number one, to walk in the wealth that God has for you, you should make time for God to speak to you daily. Fear his word. Fear the Bible. And allow God to direct you like he directed or like he led Isaac. Listen to the Holy Spirit too. Two, just as Isaac believed God and worked hard and planted crops in a hard ground and no rain, you should believe God and prepare for your greatness and wealth by taking your studies seriously and by working hard too. Three, God has promised you wealth and so you must be a good steward of the money you get. All those monies that uncles and aunties, daddies and mommies give to you, be a good steward. Don't waste your money. We've already taught you what to do with your money. You can save, you can pay your tithe, you save, you invest. Hmm? 
Okay, so our memory verse for today is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. The ESV translation says, You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you power to get wealth, that He may confirm His covenant that He sought to your fathers as it is this day. Now for your home play, I want you to read the following Bible verses and know and believe that you are wealthy. In fact, I want you to confess those Bible verses over your life. So we have them written on the screen. Just take note of them, read them and confess them over your life. Okay? Good. Thank you so much for staying through till the end of the service. So the question is, is the Lord Jesus your best friend? Is he your Lord? Is he your savior? Because if he is not, then you cannot claim Abraham's blessings. Abraham's blessings are for those who are in Christ Jesus. So this is a perfect opportunity for you to give your life to Christ so you can enjoy the wealth that God has for you here. Put your hands together, close your eyes, and say this short prayer after me if you sincerely want to give your life to Jesus. Say after me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me on the cross of Calvary. Please come into my life. Come and be my Lord and Savior. Come and wash away my sins with your precious blood and write my name in your book of life. Purify me and help me to always listen to your Holy Spirit. Help me to read your word so I will know what you have for me. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the angels in heaven always rejoice when someone gives his or her life to Christ. So they are rejoicing right now. And I'm rejoicing too. So how do you build your relationship with God? We have something that can help you do that. It's called the Royal Scroll. So you can download it from the link showing on your screen. Are you watching us on YouTube? Beautiful. Are you subscribed to our channel? If you haven't subscribed, please click on the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and share our video with your friends and loved ones. Please also join our Telegram channels. And don't forget to be a part of the next Excellent Clan Chatroom by sending in questions on any topic we have taught or on any other topic you may have to the numbers showing on your screen via WhatsApp, Telegram or SMS. It's been a beautiful time with you. We want you to have a beautiful, fantastic week. Remember that Jesus loves you, so go and conquer your world for him in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget you are wealthy.